Warning, this channel is meant for viewers 21 plus and was created for educational and documentary purposes only. Beginner Buzz does not condone illegal activity and certainly does not sell anything. So don't even ask. Seriously. How's it growing, everyone? We're gonna do something a little different this week, and we're pretty stoked. Sure, we like to light up our end product as our main form of consumption, but we wanna try something new. So, how else can you partake when the lighters are down? Edibles, of course. Now, there's a lot of different ways to ingest cannabis, but they all have a slightly different process. But there's always one thing you have to do before you can make any food-related product with weed. It's called decarboxylization, and it's the process of breaking down cannabis in a way that allows you to get lifted. So that's exactly where we'll start. Play with my limits, drink till we're sinning, baby I'm ready to stay for a minute. Play with my limits, drink till we're sinning, baby. All right guys, so things are still doing just fine in the tents, but we wanted to try something a little different this week. I mean, don't get us wrong. There's nothing more that we'd rather do than spark one up and partake in a calming smoke sesh. Even with that, it's hard to get bored. You got joints, pipes, bongs, bubblers, dab rigs, and each one of those have their own subcategories as well. That said, that's not the only way we can use everything we're growing to get us where we want. As we all know, people can ingest cannabis as well, but what many people don't understand is that it has to be prepared in a certain way. In the end, if you popped a bud you were ready to smoke into your mouth and ate it, likely not much would happen, if you felt anything at all. That's because there's actually a blocker built into the chemical makeup of your bud that prevents THC from binding to cannabinoid receptors in the body's brain and nervous system. The chemical inside of marijuana is actually something called THCA. Most of us know that it's the THC part that we're interested in here, but what is that A? Well, simply put, that's our blocker, and it needs to be separated from the THC for proper consumption. This is where decarboxylization comes in. In simplest terms, decarboxylization uses heat and time to turn inactive THCA into bioavailable THC ready for consumption. Fortunately, time is readily available to all of us, and heat, well, as long as you got either an oven, stove, or crock pot, well, we got you covered. That's right, we're gonna be walking you through three methods of decarboxylization, and even better yet, we're gonna put them to the test in a later episode to see which method was the most effective. With all that out of the way, you're gonna need a few things. First and foremost, you're gonna need some cannabis. Now, just remember here that if this is your first time, don't go all crazy and use up all your bud. Start slow, get it right, and go from there. You don't wanna end up wasting a bunch of this stuff. For us, we're starting with just a half ounce per method. And we're using our Gorilla Glue from last season. Along with that, you'll want a grinder and a scale, and depending on your method, either a crock pot, cooking pot, or cookie sheet, a glass jar with a band and a lid, a towel, or some parchment paper. We'll tell you exactly what you need when we talk about each method. For us, we headed to the oven first, meaning that we would need a cookie sheet, a towel, and a glass jar with a band and lid. Preheat the oven of between 220 and 240 degrees Fahrenheit. We went with 240 degrees and got to work grinding our bud. Of course, this was an ounce and a half, so you can imagine how time consuming it was. Once that was done, we weighed out a half ounce, put it in our glass jar before sealing it with the band and lid. With that done, you're gonna wanna lightly wet a towel and place it on the cookie sheet, not only helping anchor the cookie sheet, but also helping to keep the jar in place. 
Once the oven is preheated, place the entire thing inside and bake it for 60 minutes. Every 15 minutes, get your oven mitts on and give the jar a shake to keep the heating process even. After 60 minutes, you're done. All you simply need to do is remove it from the oven, let it sit for 30 minutes before either storing it in the freezer or using it for cooking. Now, I will say, decarboxylization is a delicate process, and some people argue that with the oven's natural range in temperature as it's cooking, it doesn't make for the best method. However, we're using the tools we have at our disposal, so we'll just keep on trucking and test it out later. Also, I just want to note here that this is a way to keep the smell down in your house when trying to carry out the decarboxylation process. If you don't mind or even like your house smelling like cannabis, feel free to follow up on all the same steps. Just ditch the jar and towel. Instead, you'll simply need to lay out some parchment paper on a cookie sheet, dump out your material right on top, and bake for 20 to 30 minutes. The second method we went with was the stove method, and it started out the same. Measure out a half ounce, put it in a jar and seal it up. From there, we grabbed a cooking pot, filled it about halfway with water, ensuring it wouldn't boil over to the top of our jar, put our jar inside, and placed it on the lit stove. Remember here, make sure you start with cold water in the pot, because if you put a glass jar in hot water, it could crack and no one wants that. Heat the water up to boiling and then bring it down to a low simmer with the jar in place. Simply simmer for 90 minutes and voila, you're done. Just like the oven method, leave it to cool before storing or using in food. Another tip, don't take off the lid until everything is completely cool as you could end up inadvertently releasing the same terps you're hoping to later enjoy. And lastly, we had the crock pot method. Similar to the stove method, we weighed out a half an ounce of ground up cannabis before placing it in a glass jar and sealing it with the lid. From there, we put the jar inside the crock pot and poured as much water in as we could without the jar starting to float. Simply set the crock pot on high and let the water boil for four hours before removing the jar from the heat. Alternatively, you could run the crock pot for eight hours on low. One thing worth adding here is that although this is the most popular method for at-home decarboxylization, many people say that it is the most ineffective. In short, they argue that the crock pot can't get to high enough temperatures to get the most out of the process. That said, we'll just have to wait and see if we can notice a difference in the face-off. Once again, remember, don't open the jar as you allow your material to cool before storing it or using it. So there you have it. Three different ways to decarboxylate cannabis and now comes the fun part. Once this is done, you can infuse either cooking oils, which olive oil or coconut oil are among the most popular, or butter to put it in whatever you feel like. For us, we're going to start with some coconut oil, but you'll have to wait and see exactly how we did that. Remember, the end goal here is to see which way was the most effective and what better way than with a face-off. For the next few weeks, we'll be walking you through the process of making edible gummies, and we'll keep track of which gummies were made from which method. Make sure you tune in next week to keep up on that, and in the meantime, feel free to check out any one of our social media accounts for additional content. As always, keep learning, keep growing. Catch you later, guys.